Hello, it's Richard from the future again. So this video proved to be a bit of a pain. Um, we developed an intermittent fault with the phone that I used to record these and it was randomly stopping. It means that we've probably lost a few minutes of footage and there's quite a few really odd jump cuts in here. Um, that's just because of the way the phone left it. Um, we do have another one of these units coming in. Um, I've learned a little bit on how to do this now so uh, what I will do is we'll get this video up I'll leave it up along with the comments and the dodgy cuts and um, when the next machine comes in I will revisit the repair and um, I'll show you the way it should have been done the first time um, I'm not it's not to say that the way we've done it is wrong it's just that we overcomplicated stuff because I don't know this mechanism um, basically there was an easier way as you'll see at the back at the end to actually get to the laser assembly and um, to be fair if i'd have thought about the fact that this looks like a sony mac i'd have realized that probably before we got too far into it but hey you live and learn once again sorry about the dodgy jump cuts and um there'll be more videos fairly hot on this i want to get a run of them out so enjoy your enjoy your watching hi guys uh, another range rover one for you today um, this is the Clarion CD changer at the back of my P38. Um, it plays what it feels like. Um, mostly it will play certain tracks, but it will play the same tracks on every disc, which means there's a dirty mechanism. And to be fair, having seen the state of the area in the Range Rover it came out of, and the fact there's quite obviously a water leak somewhere, it needs cleaning. Slightly different setup today, I'm not at the usual bench, unfortunately there is going to be a buzzing noise in the background, that's my air conditioner, um, it's about 36 degrees outside at the moment and yeah, rather move than do without the air conditioner. I think I've got everything I need, Sod's Law says I won't have so I'm going to have to pause you at least once or twice, <laughs> just making sure that we're all in the right place. We're using an overhead light for the first time here as well so we'll see how that helps. Um, so off we go. First thing you want to do um before you disconnect this eject the pack if the pack is in there you're gonna struggle um if you don't have the pack not a problem um this sits underneath the sub which is possibly not the best place for it on the floor and these vehicles have a habit of developing leaks around that area so yeah so anyway let's just tear into it first thing we need to do is get this lid off or at least work out how we get this lid off and um, that in itself that's a challenge. I've put the mounting screws back in here, mostly so I know where they are. Um, there's all sorts on this. It really is quite grim. Well, it looks like we're going to have to take the front panel off before we go anywhere. I've done a few of these, I've just not done this particular model. So we've got four Allen bolts in the edge here. So what happens with these normally is obviously the optical pickup gets dirty. That's the first thing to go after. Um, you can use a cleaning CD. That's a possibility. Um, I don't know how well they work with CD changes. Um, I want to go this way because I know I can see the state of the mechanism. The other thing is the grease that they use in a lot of these things over the years tends to harden. So we're going to clean as much of that away as we can and put some fresh stuff in there. So hopefully this front panel will now come off. There we go. And obviously there is a fair collection of nastiness in there we'll get out. We'll give all the case a good clean as well. So how do we now get this part? This is quite common on CD changes, horizontal and vertical. That changes the suspension on the CD transport. Um, okay, it looks like we might have some form of little metal push pins in the back. Does that help us? No, that just gets my nails stuck in it. At least one of you is now screaming at me as to how to get this apart. It looks really like it actually just is designed to all unclip. Nope. Uh, we can't slide that. There is a tang in there that doesn't want to move. 
that quite obviously does. We are pushing on the top. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you just need to press something in there and push upward on the lid, and that disengages. It did on that side anyway. Generally, car head units are the same. There's not a lot of thought given to uh, keeping them secure because, well, they're in a dashboard and no one really cares. But we'll just move that out, and there we go. We're in. So you've got two parts to a uh, CD changer like this. You've got your CD trans, uh, your CD changer transport, and your actual um, CD transport. So what happens? You put your cartridge in. I think there is a disc in here. Yep. Uh, there is. How does this one do it? Which way does it go in? Just need to take a few seconds to look at how this one works. Don't push it in. Okay, so what we've got, we've got a little piece of metal here that moves up and down. That index is on these levers here. So you select your CD, in this case it would be CD number 5. That ejects it. There's a set of rollers here that draws the disc in and um, obviously we play. So what we're mostly interested in is the deck here. I don't want to take things apart more than I have to. I think unfortunately we're going to have to. So we've got a opto sensor here, which I'm going to take off, just so we can unpick that bit of wiring. These are all very variable. Um, there is an amazing amount of variation on the way these changes are built. So, you know, each one is different. Some. If the pack's stuck in there, you are not getting the getting the uh, pack back without power. This one actually looks like you probably could get the pack out. And whether you'd be able to get much further. Oh, there's always one. Not without bending things. So we're going to need to get on the edge of that. Bear with me. I'll right, we'll go get some more tools. And I notice that you've slipped a bit as well. So, got that screw out. Um, the plate then tilts and pulls out. Um, as you can see, there is corrosion in here. Um, it's nothing to be worried about. There is a fair amount of nastiness in here as well that will need to come out. Um, but you can see a bit more of the mech down here and you've got a lot of transport parts here and although there is grease here and it's good we will re-grease that and you've got the same here as well um, I'm wondering do we release the whole lot is that even doable I'm just looking to see where the PCBs underneath everything move they do move with this Do we need to, or can we just take the outer clamshell off? We might be able to just pull this clamshell off. No, there's no need to do that. So I'm not overly keen to do it. We do need to get down here at the laser assembly, which is going to be fun. Just wondering, can we manually lift that? No, we can't. There's more gearing down here. Um, I say our primary goal is the laser assembly and the motor for it. So the motor is buried in there. The laser is right underneath here. Excuse me. <coughs> so really, we need to work out how to get that top plate off without dismantling everything and it doesn't look like that's going to be an easy proposition or move the laser somewhere where you can get to it let's just can we get down on that so there's a little worm gear down here which I can't really show you I'm trying to turn I really can't Stay with me right so 
I need to work out how to get things moving without dismantling this much more than we nearly, really need to. Um, this looks like it's actually a fairly standard uh, transport from um, pretty much any in dash CD player. You've got your rollers here which take the disc in. They need cleaning because they're covered in muck and of course that's going to be pressed into your CDs. So normally we take that one, that one, that one and that one out and lift the top off and we're in there. We can get what we want. Unfortunately this one we can't because there is a guide rail here which is not only part of the CD loading mechanism um, but it's held on on the back with some little e-clips which I did I wouldn't want to interfere with. I think I am going to see if we can get a little bit deeper into this. Bear with me. But it actually looks like this is easier to do than I thought. Everything is just sat into the chassis. So what we've got to do is hold the bottom down and lift up. So let's just quickly get this spring off. You need to remember to put these springs on. And in the event we have to disturb any of this, we've got to remember that it goes back on the right way. So that just lifts out like that. I didn't take the spring off. I did access it there, but I didn't get it off. There we go. Yay, right, that makes life easier. And again, you can see just in here, we've got corrosion, corrosion again, and just a vast amount of nothing to fill. Right, where does this get us? How much further can we get? So these are the shock absorbers on the side. We're not worried about them, but I think if we take this plate off, we might stand a chance of getting where we want to go. Uh, the other thing to bear in mind is a lot of this stuff is timed so that's part of the reason for not wanting to take off stuff that doesn't need to be because everything will need to put back into uh, exactly the same place exactly the same timing now my hope is that we take those three out and these two here and I think we've got the same on this one nearest us as well. There we go. I think we will probably be able to on the bottom here. That looks like the entire transport will come out. We've got two connectors here. We may or may not need to take these out. I'm going to take them out now so that if we do move the transport, nothing goes horribly wrong. Gently pull these tabs up. It is easy to break these. If you break these, it's game over. And just gently tug these ribbons out. Don't put any pressure up here. Just looking at this end board, and we've got quite a lot of corrosion on there. That is actually the power input for the fuse, so we might have to have a look at that. And we've got another two screws here that appear to support the deck. Plastic cover is going to need to come off. Well, ideally, I didn't want to go to this level of tearing it down, but I think this is just the way it's going to have to go. Give that a good clean as well. And then, hopefully, if we pull this off, we've got this front here as well. Slightly concerned that, that roller has just dropped. Okay, the roller runs on a little peg here, so that's fine. We need to make sure that goes back on exactly as it is. Just looking to see how everything is moving. So we've got 
two more here. And that feels like it might be mostly free. That worry, always that worry that everything is just going to go kaping any moment. We've got another rod along here. It's that rod that ties everything in. So unfortunately it's eclipse time. These things have such a horrible tendency to just disappear off into the ether. If one of these hits the ground you'll never see it again. Just spin that one round a bit. Get it started and then I just use the wedge on the tweezers to drive it out and that way it's not likely to ping. rather hope to get as much of this as possible out without having to resort to this level of demolition. But this is the bit we want, this plate. Let's just see if we can just ease this out now. No, we can't. And there's our first timing gear down there. So we need to make sure that that engages back into that rail. More eclipse. It is at this point where I'm seriously thinking, you know, just cut pipe clean and CT. <laughs> it is nice, however, to see that. Um, the grease that's been used in here is the uh, black stuff, not the white stuff that does go off. But right, there's that plate out. We still can't move that one there. There is nothing now that should really be. Oh, yep, there's another one. So we've got an E clip down here as well. A bigger one in a slightly awkward position. There we go. Can we get this plate out now? No, we still can't get this plate out. This is turning into something I did not want it to be. We're still not clear of that. little tray alongside me where all of this is going so I've got a reasonable hope of getting it back together we can have a knee clip on there as well this is quite quickly going into the realm of if this ever works again I will be impressed I need something bigger to get that one Thought we'd got our first escape even. I'll be completely honest, I'm going to this kind of level of teardown that I would go to on a piece of customer's equipment. Um, I'm not normally on a piece of my own when I'm not that worried. So that is captive, we can't go anywhere with that. We've got another connection on the PCB down there. 
and we've got a drive gear in there. So we're 90% of the way to where we need to be. We just can't quite get this plate off. I'm not totally sure what it is. It is actually retained by something else down here. So this is not going to be coming off. It's just whether I can get enough wiggle room to get the top of this transport out. This does seem doubtful. I roughly know where the camera's focused. I'm doing my best to try and keep everything in shot. So we've got There we go, we're out. Right, need to gently move this out of the way because we've got another ribbon down there. Hopefully you can see that. So we just gently pop that up and pull that ribbon out. And there we go. So this we're going to give a clean up, we're going to give some new grease. That has got the quite dodgy white stuff on it. And that is your loading motor. Just there. And you can see there's a lot of stuff on there as well. Um, again, this contacts your CD. Your CD rolls between this. So if this is nasty, um, covered in um, gunk and nastiness, it will scratch and damage your CDs. I've just noticed there's little collars on here that we need to be careful not to lose as well. And now we have the mechanism. So there's the lens. That's the laser pickup there. And that's the lens that we're going to clean. We're also going to clean and lubricate this rail and I want to have a deeper look at what's going on with that mech because there is, you might not see it, a worm in there. Um, just trying to see how difficult it's going to be to get in there. It doesn't actually look that bad. I can see another flex connector so we need to be careful. Well, you're actually in the so for reasons I don't understand um, I've noticed this over the last couple of days my phone keeps stopping uh, playing media and recording which is annoying which means this is probably gonna be very bitty I've cleaned everything off I fl I've flipped sorry I flipped this thing back over we couldn't get that board off because the spindle motor um, so what I've done is I've just manually cleaned the heads as I said best way to do that bit of isopropyl go gently on there very gently it will move don't force it and then when you're done flip it over do the other side I've done the heads first or the pickup first uh, mostly because we're now going to clean off everything that's covered in oil and uh, nastiness we don't want to contaminate it and I don't know if you can see and the light may wash it out no, the light is going to wash it out unfortunately you can see there was actually a reasonable amount of muck on there. So now I'm going to use this same one. I'm going to get in, just give the rails a clean. Literally just swab all the old grease off. We don't need that anymore. Then we've got the lead screw here for the head, same thing. Clear off all that horrible old grease. As much as we can, we can't really get right in there. some nice new stuff generally if you've got a, a machine that will play play tracks excuse me, hiccups um, play tracks absolutely fine but won't play others it's quite often a problem with a pickup this is white lithium grease um, we'll grab a fresh one of these I've just sprayed some in the cup um, this stuff is in a spray can and if you try and do this any other way it's just going to go absolutely everywhere. Just get plenty on there. Again be careful about your lens because you've just cleaned that you don't want to have to do it again. Uh, put a liberal amount on the lead screw here because obviously we can't see all of it. Uh, I'll do the same on there. 
so once it does go through and seek we'll then be able to um, or then it will transfer itself in right while we've got everything apart let's just get some more grease in there anything that you can see that moves just chuck a tiny bit on don't touch the motor you won't get anywhere that will do when we reassemble so we've got some drive gears down there for the eject mechanism and we'll just get some in there I don't think there's anything else that we can get to now that we won't be able to get to as we put it back together I hope to god we can get it back together pop that there let's have a look at the top of transport um, we look mostly okay in there again what we'll do is just get some grease in there and say I already mentioned that there's a couple of loose bits in here so do make sure that they definitely go back in we just want to make sure that there is enough on there that it will all get mashed around the gear train and everything will be happy there's nothing on that side we've got a little bearing there we've got everything there uh, there's possibly sorry out of shot possibly just put a little bit on those hinges there I don't think there's anything else I can see that's likely to be a problem basically anything that moves we just want to uh, make sure that it continues to do so freely um, we'll get a little bit on the end of those rollers we're going to clean them in a second and we'll get in there a second I only haven't done that at the moment because I have no desire at all to cover myself in this stuff so that's ejecting I believe yeah so just turn that until we've got a good coating on everything if we go the other way you can see this gear will come up should happen is it will hit resistance on the rollers and then we should start the actual loading process and you can see that half moon gear now starting to move now obviously we want this to go in the same way it came out because of the timing in here so let's just ease that back manually to where it was which was there's a stop in there that it was on and then that looks like that pulls that gear out of engagement and we're good right just going to get in there on that worm now, if there is any way that I can realistically avoid getting covered in this well maybe I can there we are right let's do these rollers again so we're going back to the ice profile alcohol I need to make sure that you are still filming. You are. So literally, this is just straight isopropyl and give the rollers a good clean. Each pass you do, turn the cotton wool bud. Easiest way to do it is to work in a particular direction. I know I changed direction going through here. But it will allow you, it will give you a line as it dries and you'll know where you've got to. The top one's slightly more difficult. This is actually getting more difficult now. I'm just going to scrub this now. Because obviously the top one is fixed, so there's not a lot we can uh, do. I think, can we manually turn that? No, so that one we're going to need to spin the motor so this is where me covering everything in grease already <sighs> look at that so we've got another involuntary jump cut there um i'm really not sure what's going on bear with me yeah i'm really not sure what's going on with this phone um i've had problems with media playback suddenly stopping as well so 
I've just got to be careful with this, keep looking up and make sure you're, you're recording. So we've cleaned the rollers, we've greased up all the loading mechanism, we've got this back in. I have just cleaned and re-greased this, which needs to go on now. Um, this is... Good question. Where does that one go? I think this is that one there. It is indeed. So we should have this shaft to go in as well. So this one needs to sit in there. I do need to really keep checking on this. I'm really sorry that this is getting so broken as well. So we're going to need to do that. We're going to need our Eclipse back as well. So I will give this the same treatment that I've just given the other bits. Get rid of the worst of the muck. And then we'll just give that a nice good slathering of the new stuff. these Eclipse as well. As long as you avoid actually getting anything that's involved in transport, uh, actually touching the disc, you are um, fairly free to go absolutely nuts on this. So we've got a, an Eclipse there. We've got the Eclipse on the other side and this should all just lock together like so. A little more Eclipse than that. Right, time to start losing the damn things. So make sure everything is all squeezed together. Do you stand a fighting chance of getting things where they're supposed to be? Make sure things don't just randomly move and sod off to where I want to be. There was an e clip over there, we'll have to go have a look at that. As I said before, these things are just so easy to launch. The easiest way I found is get the screwdriver on the end, put your finger over it and push. That way if it does decide to launch, it's not really got anywhere to go. Is that in? It is now. I can't decide if there was one on there or not. No, there wasn't. So we've got one on the other side there. We've got a screw here, which I'm actually going to put in now just to try and keep things where they should be. You're still recording. That was awesome. I am wondering if, because I've got damaged screen, so it could be a phantom touch. I've had problems with phantom touches before um, in other places with this phone. Um, I guess the other possibility is Bluetooth interference, um, although I've turned that off and there is nothing in here that should be able to cause a problem. If we will just quickly get in here, there's some more And all of this stuff moves on top of itself as well, so we'll just try and get some in there. Right, I don't think you'll be able to see me, but we'll just get this e clip in. Same again, so edge of the screwdriver, drive it in, finger on top. There we go, that's on. Make sure it is actually home. I'm not sure that one is. Just push down on that thing like this. There we go. That's it. This side is back together. Awesome. And we'll pop that front on. We'll give that a quick clean first.
this is the back one which we'll do in a second, I think. I hope it's the back one, but I've just put this back together completely wrong. And there we go, one other impromptu cut cut screen. Um, right, okay, so we've just got the end on, I've just got the plastic front on, I'm just going to pop these back in. So make sure these are forward and up. Third time lucky. Yet another impromptu jump cut. Right, we've got the front on, um, we've greased a few more things up. Just trying to get this um, side to line up properly. And uh, we've got something that isn't fitting quite the way it should do. I'm just trying to work out why. Just oh. use the door. So this should just be going back on the side, but it doesn't want to. I don't think we've damaged or bent anything. It just doesn't push in. So we've got, uh, that might be it, we've got a bearing there, okay, we've got another one in there, but this needs to come in, it doesn't seem especially interested in doing so. So we're out of alignment, I can see that much, there we go, we're in. I say a lot of these things there is timing involved and the location of parts is critical so uh, sometimes it does just take a little bit of finessing to get everything back in where it should be. Um, we're going to have lots and lots of e eclipse to go on in a minute. So that's now Maybe everything we can see. I think we might have roller that's not quite right on this edge so if I lift this hoping we can get that in there we go so it doesn't feel quite right so we look at this side we've obviously got this end plate to go on yet um, we didn't take this off but we will clean it and you are still with us so just clean all the gunge and muck off it's going to be time for a new um, one of these and having cleaned all the muck and gunge off put some more on Make sure that little bearing that dropped off on the other side is still in here, which it is. I did see that, it went all the way over there. Let's just get that before it becomes a problem. Right, so we're on this one. I've already greased this one. So we've got guide pins there, which we'll need to fit into these slots here and then we've got our two screws that lock everything down so let's just make sure everything fits where it looks like it should it's a nice positive click hey we stand a chance that this might actually work when we're finished I mean, generally with this it's a case of just make sure everything goes back where it came from pay attention to what you're doing when you're taking it apart and you'll be fine. Um, your only critical bits really is the lens. Um, as long as you get everything else lined up you won't have a problem but if you have issues with the lens you can land yourself into a bit of hot water. Let's just get another e-clip. We've got one we need there, one we need there. We've got quite a big one here as well. Where's my flat head? So same again, screwdriver to push it into place. And then just finger over the top to make sure it can't go anywhere. There we go. On. Did I grab both? Yes I did. You're still on, that's good. There we 
go and just a quick wiggle to make sure we are where we should be. And we've got one there, one there by the looks. Yep, one there, one there. I'm not sure why one is different to the others, but I'm sure there's a good reason. <laughs> it's just made by because it says Clarion, but I'm not necessarily sure I believe it's a Clarion. That one goes there by the looks. There is a lot of rebadging that goes on with uh, this stuff, especially things like CD changes. Okay, so. Oh, we've got a contender for an airborne one here. There we go, that's on, I think. Yeah. Uh, there we go, there's always going to be one. I doubt you can see a lot of this at the moment. I just guide him up to position and click. Right, we're all on, we're all happy with things. I don't know that that one is. It looks like it's not quite in position. Just make sure everything moves out, which it does. It looks like this roller should be up and resting. Oh, there we go. So that roller rests on a ledge in there. It wasn't quite there. I wonder if this one does as well. I don't think it does by the looks. Oh, I'm getting grease everywhere. Check. There is a spring in there. It's retained on part of the loading mechanism here. Cool. We are winning. We don't have many screws left, and we've got a lot of bits that aren't particularly clean. So let's just clean. We're not quite ready for that yet, but. At least get the worst out of it. To be fair, it's buried in the boot, so we're not massively concerned about things. But it would be nice if it actually looked half decent after the after we finished. Yum! Where does that mechanism move? The mechanism moves there, so what we can do is just throw some of our white grease down in there, and we might be able to safely get a little bit just in the top there. That feels better. That done, got that. We've got the loading plates next. You're still going. I might have solved that problem. So we're going in. We go above or below? Get it the right way up, it will work better. Now see if I was really clever I wouldn't have put that back on just yet. We're all getting a bit mucky here with all the stuff that's fallen out. Let's just take this black plastic off again. Just because I can see that that will make our life easier. Haha! <laughs> Not fast enough. So this, there's nothing on there to lubricate, there's nothing on there we're particularly worried about. Obviously we've not lubricated really much of the change of mech, but there's no real easy way to get to it. And that goes on so much easier that way. So in we go with these. We have a 
Item number base. That's our broken one. I need to try and find a replacement for that in a minute. While we're trying to get that one out, I can see that we've bent things a little, so uh, we'll go in and straighten that up right. For now, I'm going to put that one in there, possibly, maybe not. We've distorted that a little where I was uh, trying to free it. Nothing is tight yet. It's uh, always a good idea just not to wind everything up until you've got every single screw in its place otherwise you can uh, create some headaches for yourself right so what we need to do is just gently tweak this back to where it should be like that Trying to see where you are actually are framing wise. There, okay, that's good. There we go, that one's in, 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 that one's in. So we'll now put our pack sensor back in. Well, I thought I'd solved the problem, but apparently I hadn't, and it's gone and done uh, another jump cut on me. We're all back together now. We've made sure that the cartridge fits. Um, I'm really sorry this video has end up, ended up as jumpy and bitty as it has. Um, unfortunately, I don't know what the cause of the problem is, and I'm starting to think that uh, I might have a problem with the phone. Um, I now need to go and try this out. Uh, hopefully we've we've cured the problem. It does mean I've got to excavate my boot to get to where the changer lives. And um, fingers crossed we've got it. Sorry it's so bitty um, and it's disjointed, but unfortunately there's not a lot I can do about that. I've got another video that I'll be shooting shortly as soon as I've backed this up. And uh, hopefully I can get this edited and out to you fairly quickly. So, um, yeah, that's all there is to it. Make a note of what you're doing. Be thorough and um, be gentle with a laser and that's all you need but uh, I'll be back shortly and I'll let you know if it worked so it turns out I missed something under here is a um, the PCB flex connector to the top of the carriage mechanism which I forgot to reconnect um, turns out there's also a substantially easier way of doing this so obviously we have lubed clean the mech and that as well but it turns out you can remove this screw this screw and this screw and the whole laser and sled assembly comes out the back well that's quite annoying but there you go this is how we learn so um if you are just doing the lens and the sled then that's all you need to do take the case off pop those screws three screws out and you're done um, you can actually get this board off fairly easy and get under there and uh, it's definitely a Sony board. The rest of it may be Clarion. That is definitely Sony. That is definitely Sony. So uh, yeah. Anyway, now I know that this is probably stands a fighting hell, uh, cat in hell's chance of working and the fact that my dinner is ready. Um, I'm going to quickly slam the back on this on, put it in the car where it's going to work absolutely perfectly and then I'm going to go have Sunday lunch. Thanks for watching. Bye.